This is Kai the Angry Bird A Bear, and you're watching Stat TV Show. Kai A Bear from Montreal West. What's going on? How, how's everything? Everything's good, man. Glad to be here. How's the family? How's the, the wife? How's everything with your, with, your, with your kids and everything? Life is good, man. The wife is healthy. Baby on the way come April. Mm -hmm. Season's wrapped up. So now just really focus on my community works, all my charitable events, and of course the two radio shows. Well, that's great. Oh, it was great to hear some stuff. What do you do besides football? That, that includes you have a car care foundation as well too. And also you have also stuff going on outside of football, that includes charity events and also your radio station, your radio station excuse me, like you're doing before. Right. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, right? You're born and raised in Louisiana. Who introduced you to the game of football? You know what? Football is just a part of our culture. I mean, mm -hmm. it's as common as Sunday dinner. Everyone goes out and play football, regardless if you're good, bad, uh, you love it or not, you're going to be out there with the guys because it's just a part of what they do in the community, part of the culture. Mm -hmm. So all my friends, all my family, we play football since I was five years old, just out in the street, mm -hmm. in the fields, it didn't matter. Okay, and then after that, you play your high school um, time in Louisiana, then I went on to play for University, University of Louisiana in Lafayette, then you went on to play in the NFL. Uh, you've been has been an, an undrafted, excuse me, in 2002 for the, by the Minnesota Vikings, right? Talk to me about your your NFL experience. Well, I have a very um, very roller coaster career where I was able to spend time in the NFL, then go to the CFL, then actually go back to the NFL, then come back to mm -hmm. to the CFL. So it was you know between leagues a lot, mm -hmm. but I had a great opportunity to learn from some of the best and compete against some of the best. Like my rookie year. I got to Minnesota, I had Randy Moss and Dante Culpepper to compete wow. against every day at practice. Uh, the second time I went back to the NFL, mm -hmm. had to compete against uh, Ocho Cinco mm -hmm. on a daily basis, and then one year even had Ocho, had uh, excuse me Terrell Owens come in, in onto the team, mm -hmm. and so that created more competition on a daily basis, which only helped strengthen my games when I came back to Canada. Mm -hmm. I mean, the work was almost like light work. And that's great to hear because a lot of people don't have the opportunity to play against veteran players that takes them under the wing to become more professional, right? Right. And I think from my experiences, I mean, being a captain, I was a captain on the Cincinnati Bengals team. Wow. I actually, my leadership skills grew and I was able to be a leader of men and be mm -hmm. strong in the face of adversity and being on a team in Cincinnati where we went from winning four games in a season to the next year actually sweeping the AFC North mm -hmm. and going to the playoffs. So I think all those things helped to build the character and strength and leadership qualities that I have today. Mm -hmm, that's great. For the fans out there who watch this football, can you elaborate exactly to the audience what's the difference between playing in the NFL and the CFL? Uh, like two zeros at the end of the checks. <laughs> outside of the pay, all jokes aside, outside of the pay, I mean the size of the field, the rules. I actually feel that the CFL is a lot more entertaining and you're allowed to play a little bit more. I mean, outside of me, I'm probably the most fine player in the last decade in the mm -hmm. CFL, but you can do a lot more mm -hmm. without the scrutiny of the commissioner getting involved and, mm -hmm. you know, we're actually allowed to play football. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of NFL players, when they go, when they hear the word CFL, there's three things that comes in their mind. The taxes, and when it comes to Canada, the weather, and also in Quebec, the language barrier. Did you have any problem with that when you came here in Montreal? You know what? I fell in love with Montreal the day that I arrived. Like, I loved the city from day one, and I, that's why I call it home now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I made a decision to live here permanently. Mm -hmm. uh, never really affected me. The cold, I embraced it, because mm -hmm. growing up in Louisiana, there is no, there's no winter. Mm -hmm. So year round, it's always summer, spring, and yeah. a little touch of fall. The so, and everything like that yeah, too. so it was it was awesome for me to actually experience what it would be like to have a white Christmas, to see the snow and have to deal with those type of challenges that people see. I, I saw it as a, mm -hmm. a new opportunity for new adventures. Mm -hmm. And now, also that, but now, uh, from what I heard, you're also a proud owner of your Cal Care Foundation. You also donate, um, uh, do, you also do charity events and a hospital as well too. You went to your teammates and, and, your, and yourself too, went to the Montreal Children's Hospital yes. and also went to the St. Jason Hospital. Talk to me about your charity events 
onto the football? Well, through my foundation, the Kai Cares Foundation, mm -hmm. we've been doing work in the communities in which I come from or the city that I'm playing in mm -hmm. for probably the last 10 years before the foundation was actually a foundation. It all started with me, right? So mm -hmm. I made a decision to give back mm -hmm. using my position in the community as mm -hmm. one that would be a difference, as a difference maker. Mm -hmm. Not just being another pro athlete, I didn't want to waste my platform. Mm -hmm. So I've used that to make a difference in the lives of others. And since being in Montreal, mm -hmm. working with Cedars Cancer Institute, mm -hmm and um, now spending a lot more time with Lucon, which is for kids with cancer. My wife is actually the regional project manager wow. here. So good she, yeah, so it only makes sense that, that we would work together mm -hmm. to help young kids who are suffering from a terrible disease. And why do you think athletes, uh, why do you think athletes have to give back to the community? Why do you think it's so important for athletes to do it? I feel like it's a huge responsibility that you have as a pro athlete. Like, this is the city that support us. These are the people that support us. If they don't buy tickets, you don't get paid. That's right. So, in a way, we're all connected from, okay, they help you with their with your job, but mm -hmm. I think it's a respect for, for the city, a respect for the community, and a respect for your position. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, we're very fortunate to have an opportunity to be pro athletes, and it's a career that doesn't usually last very long. You're talking a pro athlete lifespan or career span is average three to four years, yeah. less than four. True. So take advantage of it. Make a difference in the lives of others, and sometimes, somehow, some way, it normally finds its way back to you. Mm -hmm. So if you true. put good out there, good things come back. That is so true. And to switch subject, I would like to talk about decisions that everybody wants to know around the football league. I know the question I know you're waiting for is, what is your whole take on the color cap situation? I'll give you my take on that. I think me personally, the way they win. They were treating them. I think it's actually unfair, unjustified, because we look back. Let's say in professional basketball in the NBA, they allegedly—I'm not saying—but they allegedly blackballed Craig Hodges, they allegedly blackballed Chris Jackson, and now they're doing the same thing to Colin Kaepernick. Since you're a football player yourself, what is the whole thing on the Colin Kaepernick situation? You know, I, I watched the Chris Jackson thing happen. I mean, he changed his name to Mahmoud Raouf. Raouf, exactly. Yeah. I'm from Louisiana. He was from uh, Louisiana State yeah, University. So I was a big fan of his, and I watched that happen. And um, with Colin, you know, it's, it's better to stand for something than fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, at this point, I just saw that GQ named him Citizen of the Year. Mm -hmm. And it's far greater to be Citizen of the Year than mm -hmm. Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. So I think he's gotten his gotten the message across of what his stance is mm -hmm. and that he's going to stand beyond, behind what it is that he believes. If he happens to be blackballed by it, I mean, he's been very fortunate to make lots of money. Mm -hmm. It's it's not fun to see him go through that, mm -hmm. but people are watching, people are listening, and people are following his lead. And I think his decision to be a difference maker and be a citizen, a great citizen of not only the U.S., a citizen of the world, I think that's to be commended and re respected. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, that's, and that's true. It's a virtue right now that eventually he'll, he'll get a shot back in. Well, that's my personal. He will get a shot back in the film. Probably not this year, but I think next year the team will come and pick it up. I don't know if they will. We don't I think don't, so? Usually when they black while they do a good job of doing it for life. But you know what? Football doesn't define who you are. It doesn't define who he is. And he has proven to be a man of honor and who stands for something that yeah. is for his people. That's right. And that, that's ultimately, he'll be able to go to bed at night, I bet, and be content with where he is in life. Yeah, that's true. Like sport comes to an end, and sometimes it comes to an end by injury, it comes to an end by, okay, they think someone is better than you, or mm -hmm. it could be political. Mm -hmm. If his has to come to the end for standing up for what is right mm -hmm. and being a difference maker, mm -hmm. I'm sure he's going to be proud of that. And he has a lot of people, such as myself, mm -hmm. I've never met him, who's very proud. Mm -hmm. Okay, and one more thing before uh, we put this into the interview. It's been a very much disappointing season for the Montreal Alouettes. A lot of people are expecting to make the playoff and everything. What are your expectations for next year exactly? Well, 100% to be better than this year, mm -hmm. and I believe that's going to happen. And I know that the management and owners have put a lot of time, energy, and money into trying to get this program to the heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And um, the work is being done, mm -hmm. and I believe that we're going to see the fruits of that, the seeds that have been planted. Okay. Of course, your time is very much limited, Mr. Kayebel. Thank you so much for having a one on one TV and a Stat TV show. And congratulations also, by the way, by being nominated for a CFL Defensive of the Year and CFL Most Outstanding Player as well of the Year. 
I wish you nothing but success. You're gonna win those two awards. I believe that it will happen. And keep working hard and strive for greatness, my man. Thank you, man. Take care, man. Bless. Take care.